Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Muna Shibal and I'm a manifestation and soul realignment coach. My channel is geared towards helping you become your highest potential so that you can create and live the extraordinary life that is your birthright. In today's video, I will be explaining the concept of free will in manifesting. But before we get started, just a quick reminder that I offer both email and video coaching. So if you're looking to manifest any of your desires and you need help and guidance, then I can definitely help you. You can find all the information in the description below. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon in order to receive a notification anytime I upload a new video. So let's get started. When it comes to manifesting, it is very important to understand that only your free will matters. And until you buy into this, and until you understand that this is how it works, you are really limiting yourself. You probably will find it hard to manifest a lot of your desires because then you're saying, well, I don't, I can only manifest within the free will of other people. But really, when you understand that in your reality, only your free will matters, you'll really be able to stretch yourself in a way that you can experience anything that you desire, regardless of what that is and who is involved. But of course, how does this really work? I mean, it's conceptually something that you can say that only my free will matters, but what about the free will of other people? Where does their free will play a role? And this is what I'm going to be explaining fully in this video. To start with, it's important to understand that your physical reality is just an illusion. Physical reality is not this rigid physical experience in which we all exist and are co-creating together. It is literally an illusion. It is like a movie or a dream, as I will explain more in this video. In quantum mechanics, there is the theory of the observer, which in very simple terms states that there is no reality separate from an observer, which means that really physical reality is just an illusion. And as soon as you direct your attention towards something, it gets activated and takes physical form. And when you take your attention away from something, it collapses and disappears. As the observer of your reality, you decide what to activate and what to collapse. Because there are an infinite number of potential realities that can be observed by you in every moment. In addition, there are an infinite number of potential realities that can be observed by others. So you are an observer, they are an observer, there are an infinite number of observers that can experience a physical reality. So let's look at it from the analogy of a movie. It's like going on Netflix and choosing which movie you would like to watch. And everyone in your life is playing different roles in different movies depending on the movie that you choose with its corresponding script. When you watch George Clooney in a movie, it's a role that George Clooney has played in that movie. It's an acting role. It's not really him. It's a role, a persona he has taken on. In that movie, George is following the script. He has no free will except to play out that role. George is symbolic of everyone you perceive in your own life. They are all people who are existing in your movie. Because you are the observer. As you are watching that movie on Netflix or a movie in the theater, it's not really George Clooney playing that role for you right here, right now, right? It's a movie that already exists and you are now choosing to observe and experience that movie. This is exactly how physical reality is working. There is a parallel reality in which George Clooney is playing out the role that you have written for him. You can also look at it from the perspective of a dream. When you are sleeping at night, you experience dreams. When you are dreaming of someone, 
it's not really them. It's a version of them that's showing up in your dream. It's exactly the same concept. And sometimes you, when you become aware of yourself that you are dreaming, that's what they call lucid dreaming, you can actually take control of your dream and allow it to unfold in the way that you want. Some people are really practiced in lucid dreaming. And so the, the people you're seeing in your dreams are just playing out the role that you give them. And when you wake up and you speak to that same person you saw in your dream, they have no recollection of that because literally it was your dream. You're the observer of that dream. They were not part of it. A version of them was part of it, but they themselves, they were not part of that. In the same way, there are multiple movies, there are multiple observers. Every observer has the same choice and ability to choose a reality to experience. So looking at the real George Clooney, the real George Clooney is also choosing what to experience in his real life. He has free will in his own life and he is observing and choosing his preferred reality. As the observer of his reality, he has full control of his reality. He has free will. So even though he exists in multiple movies, it's not the real him. It's a role he played in agreement with the movie creators. You, as the observer of your reality, are the creator of your own movie. You are the writer, producer, director, and of course, lead actor of your own movie, and only your free will matters. The people in your life are all actors playing out the script that you give them, exactly in the same way that George Clooney plays the role in one of his movies. Through your focus, that physical reality or movie or dream takes form. Now, knowing this, as the observer of your reality, you can always choose a different movie or a different dream, i.e. you can shift to a more preferred reality. And with this understanding, as the observer of your reality, no one has free will but you. Because you decide what movie or dream you'd like to experience right now, and you write the script. Of course, you're writing the script through your dominant assumptions and everyone must play out that script. The people in your movie, in your life, in your dreams are an exact mirror of your inner assumptions. You get to decide. We live in a multi-dimensional universe with an infinite number of parallel realities with corresponding observers. And there are as well infinite versions of you based on your inner assumptions, what assumptions you are choosing to make dominant within you. And of course, there are infinite versions of other people playing multiple acting roles, just like George Clooney showing up in multiple movies. Now let's look at an example. I think this will really help you understand. Looking at classic SP situation, because obviously we want an example where there are other people involved. Now, of course, when you're manifesting a job, there is also another person involved, the person who is hiring. There is that company. There is always another person. But sometimes people get hung up when it comes to relationships because they feel like they want something different than what I want. So let's look at this example. John, in reality A, loves Jane, but Jane does not love John, not in reality A. In this reality, John does not stand a chance with Jane because his inner assumptions of himself and her are focused on being unloved and rejected. And if he's perpetuated that story for a while, it's actually the story he's holding on to. And he's building a story around her as well that she will never love him. But really, it is starting out with John feeling that he is not lovable. So what's really happening in reality A is John has a low self-concept. His inner assumptions are causing him to experience this reality, reality A, 
where Jane and probably other women as well can't and won't love him. The script for Reality A is fully written. It's a movie that's already there. It's played out. The script for this movie cannot be changed. In this movie, John has a low self-concept and is therefore unloved and rejected by Jane. John can't change the script. What he can change, however, is the whole movie. He can write a new script. So reality A can't be changed. Jane also has no free will in this reality. She was given the script, which says John is unlovable. So she can't love John. It's part of the script of the movie, and she literally cannot do anything but play out that role. She is literally a mirror of John's own self-concept. The good news is reality A is just one of an infinite number of realities. John can decide today to stop experiencing this movie and select another movie to observe and experience. Just like when you're on Netflix, you watch a movie, you don't like it, you change the movie. You don't attempt to change the script of the movie you're watching. That can't be done. It's impossible. So what you can do is simply choose another movie and you choose another movie by writing a new script. John can change the movie by changing his story, the story, the script of his movie. And he then can change into a more preferred reality. There are an infinite number of realities or movies. So in reality A, John loves Jane, but Jane does not like John. So John is heartbroken. But there is an infinite number of other realities that John can now shift to. So in reality B, John loves Jane and Jane loves John. So they are in a relationship. There's also reality C, where... John and Jane like each other as friends, and they are just friends, and there's nothing more than that. There's also reality D, where Jane is the one who loves John, and John doesn't love Jane. So in that reality, Jane is heartbroken. There's also reality E, where John and Jane absolutely detest each other, and they are enemies. And there's even reality X, where Jane and John never met. So you get the picture. Now, how do you know which reality is right for you? Because there's an infinite number of realities to choose from. It's simply through your desires. So John desires to be with Jane and that is pulling him towards reality B. And the mere fact that John has that desire means it's a close enough reality that he can experience. It's literally a spillover from reality B. So, John's desires are essentially leading him on his path of highest potential. And Jane showed up in his life to help him do that. She is a supporting actor, obviously. She's unknowingly doing that. She's just following the script. The Jane in reality A is helping lead John to a higher potential, to a reality where he has a different self-concept and he believes he is worthy of the love that he desires. You might say, well, why does John want Jane? Why does he, he just choose someone else who in reality A loves him? This is the thing you have to understand. Reality A is a place where John has a low self-concept. So even if he chooses someone else who does like him, Eventually, his low self-concept is going to sabotage that and that is going to turn around pretty soon. So he's going to have a lot of rejection because of that low self-concept. So really, Jane might be his motivation to work on himself and learn to love himself in order to experience a higher version of himself. And whether or not he stays in reality B and stays in a relationship with Jane is really all up to his desires, how his desires unfold. Sometimes this means happily ever after with Jane. Sometimes he might 
get into a relationship with Jane and then at some point in time they agree that they don't want this anymore and his desire now expands to experience something different. So your desires are always, always, always leading you on your path of highest potential and your goal is not to judge why you want what you want. You are doing this because there is something more for you to experience. Essentially, John's desire can be seen like an ad for a nicer movie that he can be now experiencing and observing. So the fact that he wants to be with Jane and he envisions a life with Jane is really just a potential of something else that he can be experiencing. But of course, he now has to write a new script and tell a new story because we know reality A, the script is already written and that can't be changed. So in order for John to move from reality A to reality B, he has to tell a new story. He needs to work on his inner assumptions. He needs to work on his self-concept and he needs to build a more dominant, empowering assumption about himself so that then Jane can reflect that back to him. And the thing you have to understand that John is not going to suddenly move from a reality where he's being rejected by Jane into a reality where he's in a relationship with her. It's all going to naturally unfold. It will not be a sudden and direct shift. Although, of course, that can happen if that is your desire. But here, let's look at things from a natural unfolding perspective. The new reality, reality B, will unfold through a bridge of incidents. As John upgrades his own self-concept, Jane starts to feel differently about him. She starts taking notice and falling in love with him. Or it can work in a different way. These are just examples of how these will unfold. But another option could be that John, because he wrote this brand new script, Jane can very well tell him that she's always loved him, which is possible in timeline B, because he actually would have moved to reality B and that is 100% possible. She can confess to him, actually, I have been in love with you all this time. And this version of Jane in reality B is not the same version of Jane in reality A. Because in reality A, Jane cannot ever love John because of his self-concept. So what about Jane? What about Jane's free will? Well, Jane is like George Clooney in one of his acting gigs. She is taking on different acting roles and playing them out. They all already exist as a movie, but her movie roles are just that, versions of her acting in different movies. It's like that person you dream about in your dream. It's not really them, it's a version of them. When you tell them about the dream, they don't recall that dream. They were not there. It was a version of them. It's the exact same thing. She is also just like the real George Clooney as himself. She is the observer of her own reality, which has nothing to do with her acting roles. And maybe John is acting in one of the realities she is observing. So just like John, Jane has an infinite number of realities to choose from. The Jane that John has in his reality is just a version of Jane. Where Jane is the observer of her own reality, she can experience any number of realities, which may or may not include a version of John. This is essentially how free will is working. When you get this, you get how immensely powerful you really are and how everything is literally possible. But what you have to understand is you cannot manipulate or change the 3D. In reality A, the script cannot be changed. The script is already written out, but you can tell a new story. And you tell a new story by, by having more empowering, dominant assumptions about yourself and about the other person that's involved in your reality. You can tell a brand new story. And in doing that, you literally change the movie. You change into a movie with a nicer script. And that is how you are creating your reality. 
If you like this video, then please do like, comment, share, and subscribe. This will really help my message spread and my channel to grow. And I really always appreciate your comments, so definitely do leave me a comment. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next video.